She has won the right to rest peacefully in Texas water. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. And we're pleased to give you our first official update of 2022. So obviously, you can tell by the blue water behind me, that massive cruise ship and, and draw dock back there, and well, that we're not in Texas. We're in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Gulf Copper Shipyard invited us to come down to see their new draw dock that they purchased just for the Battleship Project. Well, Battleship Project, plus some other things that they're gonna be doing in the future. So right now, this dry dock is going undergoing uh, a massive amount of uh, upgrades and uh, some repairs, and uh, it will be ready and towed to Texas in May of this year. And then a few weeks later, you know, three, four weeks later, the ship will be brought down and, and put on the, in the dry dock. Speaking of dry docks, we're in Port Arthur, Texas, at Gulf Copper's Port Arthur Shipyard. At their invitation to see the USS Orlick, Orlick is undergoing repairs, is being transferred from the Orlick Association to the Jacksonville Naval Association in Jacksonville, Florida. Once this dry dock is complete, Orlick will be hauled all the way down to the coast of Florida and up to, uh, to Jacksonville on the Atlantic side, and where she'll become a, a, a museum ship in Jacksonville. If you'd like to support Orlick, please uh, follow the link down below and there's a place where you can uh, give them some support. Other ships have given us support, particularly Ryan and uh, Battleship New Jersey have given us shout outs out and encourage folks to see our stuff. So we're encouraging our folks to help out another ship in need. So Orlick is a gearing class destroyer that was commissioned in 1945 at the end of World War II and really didn't see any action in World War II. She was heavily modified after post-war as a Fram 1 destroyer and saw service in the United States Navy uh, during Korea and, and Vietnam. After Vietnam, she was transferred to the Turkish Navy, which she stayed until the 1990s, and then she came to Orange, Texas, as part of to be a museum ship there. Coincidentally, Orlick was built in Orange. She was built and commissioned in Orange, Texas, which is not very far from where we're at right now. And then after being in Orange for a few years, she went to Port Arthur, and then now she's going to Jacksonville. So long story short, this great, historic 1945 Gearing class destroyer is being dry docked in a uh, 1944 Navy dry dock. This dry dock has been seeing continual service from 1944 all the way up through, well now. Uh, the dry dock, um, after leaving Navy service, the dry dock has been used by municipalities, by corporations, and now by Gulf Copper. Right next to this dry dock, right over there, is a 1943 Navy dry dock. Uh, it even still has its 20 millimeter gun tubs on it. How crazy is that? I mean, I thought only battleships and cruisers and destroyers had those, right? But no, a dry dock. Uh, you gotta defend yourself. <laughs> We're back in Houston. All right. That's enough of dry dock stuff for now. In June, well, we're gonna be talking a lot more about dry dock stuff because Battleship Texas is going in the dry dock mid-June of this year. So from then on, it'll be dry dock, dry dock, dry dock. That's a lot of stuff will be coming from us is what's in the dry dock, what's going on, what's happening with the ship, showing you what's going on with the ship and all the good stuff that's happening. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about the stuff that we have going on with the guns. What's been happening since our last update with, well, our guns. So. If you look in front of me right here, these two guys, these are the left and right carriages for the 40 millimeter mount, specifically 40 millimeter mount number four, which is on the signal bridge or was on the signal bridge. It's actually right here at our shop getting worked on. We've stripped this thing down to, well, all of its base components and we're building it back up, going through everything and getting it clean, we're gonna get it blasted, painted, going through all the gearboxes, making sure all the gears are good. This is one gearbox behind me for the train so let's make the train is left, right, right. And you can see how good this thing is. The gears are absolutely beautiful and it just spins. So we're gonna go through, we're just gonna clean it up, per, per, preservative coating on everything, make sure all the bearings are good and button it back up and start getting it back on the gun, or on the mount rather. Some of our other gearboxes, not so good, but you know what, we're gonna work through them. We're gonna get them done and this mount will point and train just like all the others. And it'll be smooth, smooth as silk. Well, speaking of gears, those look good. This one, not so much. This is the main elevating gear for, this was, 
well, one, one of the, I, don't, I can't remember which one off the top of my head, if it's the left or right, but you can see how chewed up from corrosion the gear is. So this guy will get cleaned up. Once we get it fully cleaned and evaluated, we'll see how much repair need to be, needs to be made to it. And then we'll do what we need to do, either repair it or replace it. More than likely just repair. I don't know if you can see just out of the shot here, but we have pallets and pallets of parts that came off of this 40. We've got another elevation gear over here, the, the, actually the whole assembly. Over here we have, um, well, more of the elevation gear. So this side of the mountain has always been the, is the we've kind of segregated out as the elevation side and the other side is the, the train. And that way we can kind of keep parts separate. They're not really interchangeable, so mix them up. It just makes it easier for reassembly. Of course, we tag everything so we know where everything goes. And where we're at in process now is that these pieces, these carriages, and in fact, almost every piece here uh, has already been needle gunned to remove any rust scale and loose paint. It's gonna get a, a light uh, abrasive blast with a, with a very fine grit to put a profile on it so that the primer just grabs the metal as hard as it can. That way we have a good coating that lasts and lasts and lasts. And hopefully we don't have to do something like this again in you know, 10, 20 years. And then we just have to do periodic maintenance. So if you wanna come in the future and be part of one of our gun crews, because we're gonna have gun crews that will take and maintain these guns. So doing all the lubrication checks on them, make sure they point and train and elevate and the moving parts still move. And then also maintaining the coatings on them. If you wanna do that, let us know, sign up as a volunteer. Uh, our link is down in the comments. You know, we'd love to have you. One of the neat things about working on these guns besides, well, working on guns, right? And getting them somewhat functional again and living again is all the hidden things that we find. And you know, whether it's, um, initials or engravings or stampings or anything like that that tells us the history of that gun and the people who worked on it but also things like paint this is a piece of well a navy blue paint this is out of the uh, right side elevation gear now, this is the right side elevation gear this actually goes inside of a tube in the in the carriage and so this is painted it's protected this piece has never been removed since world war ii that we can determine this is navy blue. This is the same color blue that the ship's painted. If you look behind me on this 20 mount that we've finished restoring, uh, it's near identical. I mean, yeah, that's glossy and this is, this is matte and it's lost its gloss or really it never had a gloss, but it's near identical to the same color. So getting that kind of validation for research that was done over the years to ensure that the ship was painted the correct color or the correct color of camouflage scheme, it's just, absolutely incredible it's it's phenomenal most of these 40 millimeter mounts saw service after the navy we know two of the mounts are from missouri uh, we actually have physical documentation of that but most of them ended up in either crane indiana or various navy ordnance depots throughout the united states and it had been reconditioned so this particular mount we opened up uh, one box and it which had an inspection tag saying that it had been uh, inspected and service in, in 1954 so by uh, a naval ordnance uh, depot. It's amazing that you know this mount saw that much service has been reconditioned at least once post World War II and saw more service life and this little bit of navy blue paint, this bit of World War II history survived. Well we showed you what was going on with 40 millimeter mount number four, mount that we're working on right now. We figured we'd go ahead and update you on our three inch 50s. They've been in process for a while now and uh, you know the biggest thing that's holding these guys up is the lack of, of gears. Each mount, we have 10 3 inch 50 mounts. Every one of them needs two gears. There's a rack gear here and a pinion gear that goes up here for the sight bar. Every one of them has been damaged by corrosion. So they all have to be replaced. And they're not off the shelf. They're, they're bespoke gears. So they're very, very custom. And a, a quite a few mounts. In fact, uh, three of the mounts in here are missing uh, their elevation gears, bevel gears that go in the handwell assembly. Those are being made right now. We're actually having all of those gears made. And once we get them in, then we'll get them into the guns and complete the guns. Now, gun looks a little dirty right now. This, this particular, well, they all do. Uh, this is just picked up the dust in the shop. This is taking longer than we anticipated on the supply side. Work side, it moved along pretty briskly. Now, we'll get everything cleaned up on these mounts, touch up the paint, make sure everything is nice and lubed 
and then cover them. We'll, we'll put a shrink wrap on them, hard shrink wrap, like we did with the 20s that are outside, and they'll go outside and wait to go on the ship. And that's, again, after we get these gears in. But, cool thing we want to show you that we haven't shown you before. Now, these guns have been sealed up. The breaches have been closed since 1948 that we know of. They haven't cycled. In fact, all of these were frozen chunks of rust. We've dumped, well, in every one of these, we've dumped weeks of worth of penetrating oil and heat and, well, a little bit of force to get them open. And, well, we've got them open. So, oh, come on. Hey, even the salvo latch works. They prevent someone from just grabbing it and doing this. Oh, hey, right? Came preloaded. So, we're gonna send you guys out with a bang, but before we do, we wanna let you know that we'll be reopening the ship March 12th and 13th and 26th and 27th in honor of the ship's 108th birthday. So come on out and see us both weekends or either one. Either way, we'd love to see you out at the ship. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If you're not, why haven't you? Come on, subscribe, like us, follow us. Uh, you can do that on not only on this platform, but also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and well, there's no Twitch yet. So anyways, um, that's, that's a running joke between Kyle and I. And as always, again, thank you for your support. Thank you for, uh, for following us on, you know, on, on social media. If you want to help out in a more tangible way, you could go to our website and make a donation or buy some merch that also helps us as well. And you get cool Battleship Texas swag. Uh, we're always adding new stuff. Usually we put one or two new products on the, the website every, every month. If you want to contribute your time, well, there's also a link to sign up there and volunteer. So come on out and volunteer with us. We'd love to have you. Uh, we're doing some pretty cool things here at our, at our warehouse, but we're also doing some, some stuff on the ship to get ready for the ship to go. Without further ado, let's lock and load. Hey. Bang. <laughs>